Hello class, welcome to Team 4's last case presentation. We will be presenting the following case, Marks and Spencer's in China, to stay or leave. My name is Saul Trujillo. This case will also be presented by my colleagues, Sofia, Ruben, and you team. We want to begin the presentation by briefly going over the agenda of this presentation. We will start off by introducing our main goal regarding this case. We will then transition to our SWOT analysis, which will be presented by Yu Ting. Next would be our marketing mix slash key issues regarding Marks and Spencer's by Sophia. We will then finalize our presentation by providing the recommendations for Marks and Spencer's. I wanna begin with a brief introduction of Marks and Spencer's. In 2008, they entered the Chinese market the reasons they entered the Chinese market was because they wanted to expand into an emerging market and they felt China was a great candidate to enter to. They found that the Chinese market had a rapid growing middle class that had a Western preference. However, due to the lack of brand awareness and having most stores break even at best, in 2016, Marks and Spencers had to decide whether to stay or leave the Chinese market. We will now transition to our SWOT analysis, which will be presented by you team. Hi everyone, I'm Yu Ting Lin, and now it's SWOT analyze. Let's start is long brand history is known for old customers, and they have a lot of product options. The strong connection of partnership on the company side chain, and then access to all, to all the Euro products and then combined combination of clothes and then post trade stores. Their, workers, their weakness are inside of the clothes they don't, the, doesn't match Chinese consumers' fashion value and then have still have and then have the, still have the size problem too. The price proceed is above their competitors and they cannot and they cannot let younger consumers want to buy their products. Most of the store in China is well run by the fast fashion competitors, and then they didn't did well brand advocacy. And then different country value than their original marketing. This brand have the biggest problem is they want to be um, a top brand in China, but they didn't do the good advertising like Louis Vuitton and then they still have like the price barber and they didn't put there in the right place so there's the weakness and then opportunities they should competitors with other rentals to sell their products and then focus on the internet marketing instead of break and Motor stores decrease the size of the store can raise costs and increase the value. Sell the best sales product primarily on the Chinese consumers' favorite. Uh, they should focus on internet marketing more, and they can save their money first, and then find which thing is Chinese consumers like it and want to buy it. And the last is. Lose this reputation among the customers. And if they still lose money in China, they may influence the, the whole company and lose competitiveness among the competitors. Fast fashion competitors take over the market share in China. Thank you. Thank you everyone, and now it's go to Sophia. She will do the marketing mix and then key issue. All right, now we're going to take a look at the marketing mix and key issues. So we found that a lot of the key issues fell under the four Ps, so we decided to just incorporate those together. So first of all, we know that the product originated in the UK. They focused on quality apparel, trade food, furniture, and housewares. Something that was interesting was that when they made the move to China, there was no local partner. 
They also had shortages in food and depended on intricate logistical handoffs not established in China in their grocery business. So not only in their retail business, but in their grocery business as well. They just decided to basically use what worked for them in the UK and think that that would work for them in China. And as we saw in the case, that was not what happened. They suffered from that assumption. So some products that they were competing against was fast fashion, as they call it, which was Zara and H&M. So these brands made an effort to incorporate local tastes and designs, which M&S was missing out on. They didn't so much want to alter their product to the culture of China. Rather, they wanted China to want their UK product and think that it was something maybe different and interesting. Next, we'll take a look at place. So not only were there disconnects between the UK market and the Chinese market, but there were differences even within China. So they found that what worked for customers in Hong Kong did not work for customers in Shanghai. There were sizing differences that left customers empty handed. Some sizes sold out faster than others. This is a really tough thing for customers who go into a store looking for something and then leaving not finding it. That's going to have a customer not want to come back to your store. So that was definitely a concern for M&S is it seemed like they didn't quite learn from their mistakes that what would work in one area might not work in another. So that leads into the next bullet point is you would think maybe after that point they would decide, okay, let's not open any more stores. Let's just focus on learning more about the different areas in which we are operating in so that we can better sell to those consumers but they decided to close five stores in Shanghai and open two more in Beijing and Guangzhou. So it did not seem like they were learning from their mistakes, rather they were just setting themselves up for future failure. It also seemed like they joined the online presence too late. So we see that a lot of the stores were moving towards online. They talked about in the case how Topshop was a big online presence to begin with and then eventually moved into brick and mortar stores. They had Walmart online, Costco online. Online was kind of where the future of retail was going, yet M&S was still focusing on opening brick and mortar stores. So we felt like that was a pretty big issue is that they did not quite understand the importance of the online store for their business. The next P we'll look at is price. So we know in their grocery industry, they had a unique and pricey good that they wanted to establish a niche offering that was more on the luxury side. But the issue with this is that as they didn't quite assimilate into the Chinese culture, they didn't have products that the Chinese really wanted. So it was just priced too high for goods that weren't really wanted by the local people shopping in those stores. It wasn't things that they were familiar with. It was more UK items that weren't going to sell all that well. The other interesting point about price is that m and took this kind of middle class stance. So they weren't fully luxury, they weren't fully fast fashion or value as you could call it. They wanted to be somewhere in the middle. The issue with this is I think they even mentioned a quote in the case, but nobody desired to be middle class. They either wanted the status of the luxury or they wanted to be able to shop those affordable value brands. And even then Zara and H&M are those fast fashion value brands, but they're still very well-known brands. So it was interesting because their price didn't quite reflect the image they were going for. They had a little bit of a luxury price maybe, but they were trying to appeal to a middle-class look. So there was definitely a disconnect in their pricing versus what they were actually trying to convey with their product. The last P we'll look at is promotion. So this kind of 
overlaps with pricing, but they tried to target over 30s, the Chinese middle class, who focused on luxury brands. So that was something really interesting is they wanted to target the middle class, but target the middle class that liked luxury items. So it seems like they were a little confused in what they were actually trying to promote with their brand. The reality was the store did not reach that market. A lot of people, like mentioned on the price slide, they didn't want to be middle class. They either wanted the luxury or they wanted the value. They didn't want to be somewhere in between. If they were paying more, then they wanted to be able to say that they were paying more for a luxury brand. So the positioning and the marketing of where the brand was somewhere between luxury and value was not necessarily the most successful way to promote their brand as it just was not something that a lot of people desired in that certain market. Hello class, now I will talk about our group recommendations. We recommend that Marks and Spencers take a luxury approach in China due to the popularity of luxury brands. M&S previously sold apparel that fit the middle class and Chinese consumers were not very happy with it. Next, we, we recommend M&S continue to seek a joint venture in order to strengthen the brand itself and help adopt a localization strategy. A local joint venture could give M&S the guiding hand it needs to enter the Chinese market successfully and give more insight on what it takes to expand into different countries and markets altogether. A localization strategy would help with brand image immensely. Entering a foreign market is, is already difficult, so the next logical step would be to increase brand awareness and providing the best quality and services possible to stay competitive. Next, we recommend that M&S leave the Chinese market after a year if there are no changes in operating costs. If after these changes are made and it seems as if the company is unable to compete, it would not be in their best interest to stay. And lastly, and lastly, whether M&S decides to leave or not, the company should put efforts towards improving their online presence and build local fulfillment centers to provide the best services to online consumers. Convenience is becoming the norm when it comes to shopping, and according to a Case Exhibit 5, e-commerce sales are growing steadily. That is the end of our recommendations and the end of our presentation.